mountains to Pikes Peak. And in 1893, she climbed these mountains in Colorado while she was seated on the back of a mule. She got on top of the mountain, she's so moved by everything that she sees in this nation, she writes a poem. That poem was put to music, it is so beloved, many people believe that this song should actually be our national anthem. If you go down to Falmouth, Massachusetts, on Cape Cod, right in front of the public library, this beautiful statue of this young lady in her honor. Her name is Catherine Lee Bates from Falmouth, Massachusetts, and she's responsible for writing the one and only America the Beautiful. And in this most gorgeous of Sunday mornings, I hope you'll sing with me, America the Beautiful. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our annual Caddy Day Ceremony. It has been a couple of years since we last gathered, so we are so happy to see you all today. Unit commanders, bring your units to present arms. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand at attention for the presentation of our national anthem. Ready? Two. Order. 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 Order.
Unit commanders, bring your units to parade rest. Thank you very much, Sergeant Dan Clark. Ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Dan Clark. I had made arrangements with Pastor Jack Swanson to have clergy here today, and he arranged to have a deacon from his church, a former Marine. Unfortunately, he tested positive this weekend. So Pastor Jack felt so bad he did write a prayer. I would ask past Quincy Veterans Council Commander George Nicholson to come forward and read the prayer to open the service. Heavenly Father, today we gather to commemorate the sacrifice of Private William Robert Caddy, who selflessly laid down his life for his comrades on one of the many dreadful days endured by so many so very long ago during the great and terrible World War II. It's so easy for us to forget that William and the legions of Williams we're so very, very young. In an age today where true manhood is often denigrated or worse, mocked, we remember William Caddy as an example of what it means to be a man. William wasn't even old enough to buy a beer when he gave his life for his brothers, the Corps, and his country. He never got to vote. He never got to marry, have children, own a home, or even get to embellish his stories at the post. 19 years old when he threw himself on a grenade. Jesus said, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. William Robert Caddy was the embodiment of the love of which Jesus spoke. May God bless us all as we remember Private First Class William Robert Caddy, and may God bless the Corps and the United States of America. Amen. It has now been more than 77 years since the battle for Iwo Jima. And because most individual recollections of the battle and of that era have faded with time, it was fortunate for the Marine Corps that Joe Rosenthal was there to capture the famous photograph of the American flag being raised atop Iwo Jima's Mount Suribachi because it helps keep that moment alive in our nation's history and serves to honor the Marines, sailors, and soldiers who fought there. For many years, we have used this memorial ceremony to tell you about the heroic actions of a young Marine from Quincy, PFC William Caddy. We know this because his decisive actions saved the lives of Sergeant Ott Ferris and his platoon leader as described in his Medal of Honor citation. And from our detachment history, we know that Caddy Memorial Park was dedicated here in October 1961 with a large parade of Marines and sailors from the Boston Navy Yard and with groups of local veterans. So my guess is this ceremony has been conducted annually right here since 1962 when the detachment formed up to remember the start of the battle on February 19th. And for many years, Bill Caddy's older sister, Beatrice Caddy Bevins, affectionately known as B. Bevins, faithfully attended this ceremony each year with her family until her passing some years ago. I recently discovered a new book by author James Hallis, in which B. Caddy Bevins 
was a contributor. As B. Bevins tells it, Bill Caddy was her younger brother, eight years her junior. Bill Caddy attended Quincy Public Schools and was athletic enough to make the varsity baseball team at North Quincy High School. Like many American families of that era, still struggling to recover from the Depression, Bill Caddy left high school without graduating to help out his family because as B recalled, things weren't, just weren't that good. Bill Caddy was just 18 years old when he was inducted into the Marine Corps on October 27, 1943. And just two weeks later, on November 10th, he reported to Paris Island for basic training. After boot camp, Caddy received further training at Camp Lejeune and was given his assignment as a rifleman with India Company, 3rd Battalion, 26th Marine Regiment, and the newly formed 5th Marine Division. On July 22, 1944, the 26th Marines left San Diego for Hawaii and even more intensive training. In late January 1945, their training came to an end and the Marines of the 26th Regiment boarded ships for an unknown destination. Operation Detachment, the official name of the campaign to assault the Japanese island of Iwo Jima was still a highly guarded military secret. The 26th Marines of the 5th Marine Division were ordered into their assault landing craft late in the day on February 19, 1945. George Nicholson, past commander of the Veterans Council, will now read PFC Caddy's Medal of Honor citation. The Medal of Honor is ward awarded in the name of Congress to a member of the military who distinguishes themselves by conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in the line of duty in action against an enemy of the United States. Further, the deed must be one of personal bravery or self-sacrifice so conspicuous as to clearly distinguish the individual from his comrades. Incontestable proof of the act is necessary, and each recommendation for the award is considered on the standard of extraordinary merit. The Medal of Honor is a symbol of those high ideals, and it represents the nation's expression of gratitude and recognition to those individuals whose uncommon valor sets them apart from all others. President Harry S. Truman signed 27 citations presenting the nation's highest award, the Medal of Honor, to 22 Marines and five Navy sailors, all heroes for their extraordinary contributions in, in victory for the Battle of Iwo Jima. His citation reads as follows. The President of the United States takes pride in presenting the Medal of Honor posthumously to Private First Class William R. Caddy, United States Marine Corps Reserves, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty while serving as a rifleman with Company I, 3rd Battalion, 26th Marines, 5th Marine Division, in action against enemy Japanese forces during the seizure of Iwo Jima in the Volcano Islands, 3 March 1945. Consistently aggressive, Private First Class Caddy boldly defied shattering Japanese machine gun and small arms fire to move forward with his platoon leader and another Marine during a, deter a determined advance of his company through an isolated sector, and in gaining the comparative safety of a shell hole, took temporary cover with his comrades. Immediately pinned down by deadly sniper fire from a well-concealed position, he made several unsuccessful attempts to again move forward and then, joined by his platoon leader, engaged the enemy in a fierce exchange of hand grenades until a Japanese grenade fell in the hole. Fearlessly disregarding all personal danger, 
Private First Class Caddy instantly threw himself upon the deadly missile, absorbing the explosion charge in his own body and protecting the others from serious injury. Stout-hearted and indomitable, he unhesitatingly yielded his own life that his fellow Marines might carry on the relentless battle against a fanatic enemy. His dauntless courage and valiant spirit of self-sacrifice in the face of certain death reflects the highest credit upon Private First Class Caddy in the United States Naval Service and the gallantry he gave his life for his country. Signed, President Harry S. Truman. Thank you, George. Ladies and gentlemen, this being the eve of D-Day, June 6th, I will ask Sergeant Dan Clark to come forward and do a tribute to all the services. Thank you, sir. As United States Marines, obviously, I take the greatest pride in my service, but we have the greatest respect for all of those who have served. Now, you know my hymn from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of? Oh, yeah. If you serve in the United States Army, you may know your hymn to be Quezons Go Rolling. Yes, they changed the word just a little bit, now called Army First to Fight, but the tune Quezons still the same. If you serve in the iconic United States Navy, your hymn anchors away. If you serve in the United States Air Force, Army Air Corps, or Space Force, your hymn Wild Blue Yonder. Now in addition to this group of men and women who not only guard our shores, but they're deployed to combat venues all over the world. Their hymn, Semper Paratus. I'm talking about the United States Coast Guard. And finally, there's a group of men and women that were long forgotten until an act of Congress in 1988 ordered that they will also be recognized as veterans because you see, they were pressed into service to take our boys overseas. Supplies, boost bullets, bandages. Many times they were sunk by enemy submarines right off the coast of the United States. I'm talking about the merchant marines. Heave ho, my lads, heave ho. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would respectfully request, when I sing your hymn, if you have served, had a family member who had served, been married to a serviceman or service woman, do me a favor. Let me see your paw in the air so I can properly recognize you. The order of military hymns is going to be the Merchant Marines, the Coast Guard, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, Space Force, United States Marine Corps. Here we go. Merchant Marines. Keep oh, my lads, keep oh. I hit so long, long way to go. I hit so long, long pull with a hat she's full, waving the wind, waving the sea, and in a treacherous bow. Keep oh, my lads, keep oh. Though the seas blow high and low, a week in the ocean, sail in the river. Give us those goods and we'll deliver them to submarines. We're the men of the merchant marines. Do I have any Coast Guardsmen on deck? Coast Guard, where are you? Come on. We're always ready for the call. We place our trust in deep. To surf and storm and howling girl, I shall up her This is our guide, a fame and glory to a tour fight to save and fight to die. I could sky we are for you with my army. Our first to fight for the right and to build a nation's might and the army goes rolling along. A part of all we have done, fight until the battle's won and the army goes rolling along. But it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Call up your cadence and strong, two, three, oh, wherever we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Navy! Anchors away, my boys! Anchors away! Farewell to Connie Joyce, we sail at break of day through our last night on shore, drink to the foe until we meet once. 
once more is wish you a happy voyage home. Where's my Air Force? Let me see him. Off we go into the world blue yonder. Flying high into the sun. Oh, down we dive, spot our flames from under. Hat to mop in the gun. Off we go, so we to meet our oh, thunder. Off in one hell of a row. We live in fame, or down in flame. Ask us up the US Air Force. All right, Marines, lock your bodies up. From the holes of Mandar's old map to the shores of Tripoli. Oh, we will fight our country's battles in the high horn land and the sea. Love is to fight for right and freedom and to keep our honor clean. Oh, we are proud to claim the title of the United States Marine. From our merchant marines to our coast guard, our army, our navy, our air force, our United States Marine Corps, and now our space force. We wish you Godspeed and stay safe. Thank you, Sergeant Clark. At this time, I would ask our Junior Vice Commandant Bob Godfrey to escort the Caddy family, Sherry Holleran, to come forward and place the memorial wreath. If I may ask Mayor Tom Koch to come forward and give his remarks today on this beautiful day. And if you would, sir, recognize your fellow members of government. Thank you, Mark. Distinguished veterans, I am joined here by Senator Keenan, Representative Ayers, Representative Chan, and Council President Old Debona. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning to remember the story of William Caddy. If you go down to North Quincy High School and go to the Atrium of Honor, if you haven't, you should check it out. There's a number of distinguished veterans that are honored in that atrium. William Caddy is one of them. Everett Pope, another one, Medal of Honor recipient, Marine Corps captain. Richard Stratton, longtime POW, Vietnam. Alan Bredno, longtime POW, Vietnam. General Sweeney, famously involved in dropping of the both bombs that ended the World War II with the bombing of Japan. And across from that wall, there's a quote from General Patton that says, it is wrong and foolish to mourn the lives of these men, but rather we should thank God that such men lived. We thank God for the life of William Caddy and for all our veterans who keep us free. God bless our veterans, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Koch. I would also like to recognize a few individuals with us today from Quincy Veterans Services, Director Christine Cugini. From the Quincy Veterans Council, we have Senior Vice Commander Steve Dunley. From the Morissette Post, Commander George Bouchard. 
From Quincy Post 95, Jean Prorock. From the Nickerson Post, John Diggins. Also with us, Captain Bloom from the Naval Reserve Center and some contingents of his sailors. Finally, we have Marine recruiting with us and they've brought a few recruits that are getting ready to go to boot camp. Welcome, gentlemen. Let us pause and remember our fellow Caddy Detachment Marines who have passed since our last ceremony. Past, com past Commandant Michael Kimball, past Commandant Wayne Gothier, past Commandant Dan Dewey, Lawrence Norton, John Mahoney, our past National Commandant James Lasky, past Commandant Chuck Bahana, John Buckley, and John Hanrahan. And finally, we remember William Caddy Bevins, PFC's nephew who passed away last summer. May they all rest in peace. Though many years have now passed since the battle for Iwo Jima was fought, we remain committed to ensure that future generations remember our nation's war in the Pacific during World War II, where uncommon valor became a legacy of our Corps. Unit commanders, bring your units to present arms. We honor all who have fallen in defense of our nation. For this reason, we continue to gather here and honor the four young Marines from Quincy who answered duty's highest call. Private Malcolm McPherson, killed in action February 19, 1945. Private John Jackson, killed in action March 3, 1945. PFC William Caddy, Killed in action, March 3, 1945. Private, John Kosky. Killed in action, March 12, 1945. 
and salute. Unit commanders, bring your units to parade rest. If I may ask Father George to come forward and read the closing prayer. Appreciate the promotion, Mark. Thank you. Our Heavenly Father, we deem this to be a fitting time to pay our respects to our departed comrade. As we stand in reverence with bowed heads, let us remember the good deeds he accomplished. Let us revere him in good, as a good soldier who, in keeping with Marine Corps tradition, fought the good fight in a just cause. Let us silently pray for peace, the peace that passes all understanding. And let us, in mind and soul, consecrate our hearts and lives to the real America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, the America worth fighting for. Let us also remember the POWs and MIAs still unaccounted for from our wars and conflicts. As we stand in silence to William Caddy and to all our departed comrades, may we sincerely say, may their souls rest in peace. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, once more, Sergeant Dan Clark. all my life and I had to start again with my children and my wife I thank my lucky stars to be living here today or the flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that away and I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free and I won't forget the men and dads gave that right to me And I'll gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today Cause there be no doubt I love this land God bless the USA of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston, and New York to LA, well oh, there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say, and I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. I won't forget the men and I gave that right to me And I'll gladly stand up 
next to you and defend her still today. Cause there be no doubt I love you, lad. God bless the USA. And I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men that died. Gave the right to me and I'll finally stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this lad. God bless ah, you. Please know that the Caddy Detachment is very grateful for the participation today. We have with us today the Massachusetts State Police Honor Guard Unit. <laughs> Quincy Police Honor Guard Unit. <laughs> Quincy Fire Department Honor Guard Unit. <laughs> and finally, from the North Quincy High School, the Air Force Junior ROTC Cadets. This concludes our memorial service. Please join us at our detachment quarters, 111 Newbury Af Avenue, for a collation. Want to thank Brian. VFW Post 613, representing Sailor Leo Reardon. Thank you all. Unit commanders, dismiss your units.